Like and subscribe. What are you boycotting till the day you die? Lifetime Fitness. It really pains me to write this, because I really love their gyms. I had a membership at Lifetime on and off through college. I went to a very large university with great amenities, so I did not need the membership during the school year. I tried to cancel at the end of one summer. I was at the gym one day and I asked about cancellation. I was told to come back at a certain time frame the following Wednesday to cancel. I complied. When I showed up the person doing the cancellations was not it there. I was told to return the following Wednesday. Surprise, surprise, the person was not it there again. I told them I was going to stop the payment through the credit card company. They responded by telling me that they would take me to collections then. I ended up escalating through their corporate offices to get the membership cancelled. They managed to get two extra months of fees out of me. After that year of college, I shifted over to LA Fitness and maintained that membership for about 10 years. When I moved away from LA Fitness, I joined the YMCA where I have been for the last 5 to 6 years. I will always have a gym membership, but I'm committed to not joining a lifetime fitness again until I'm reimbursed. It is really a loss for both of us. Facebook. It divides and dumbs down people, contrary to what it should do. Chris Brown. Sirius XM Radio. If y'all have ever dealt with the customer service when trying to cancel your subscription, y'all understand why. Any company or brand that puts advertisements on boat billboards that troll the beach and up my horizon line. That's not a fair spot to try to capture my attention. Wallet. I work there and hate it with a passion. State Farm. Thanks to some whistleblowers, they got busted committing fraud against their customers and the federal government after Hurricane Katrina. They told their claims adjusters to classify damage as flood damage rather than wind damage so that they could reject the claim and tell customers to file a federal flood insurance claim. Katrina survivor here had a 250k policy, had to sue them due to non-payment to only end up with 20k. I hate the insurance industry with a passion. Nestle. Nestle around here is a great example of when people fight hard enough, they can win against big companies. I live at the base of what most places would consider small mountains. The mountainous area is very very rural with only a few small roads. However, it is utterly beautiful and many come from other states to honeymoon there and also to watch the leaves change in the fall. The tourists are just enough to boost the local economy, but also not make it an urban area. Most of the area is protected in some way. But above all, they have the most absolutely delicious water. I know that sounds weird but it's true. Something about the rainfall and the mountains filtering it oh vertical bar. Don't know it, no. But no one has to filter water up there. It has been tested as very pure and then tastes wonderful to boot. Just enough minerals to give it taste, but not enough to make it hard water. Needle found out, took notice, whatever. They started plans to make a bottling plant there, and started the process to do so. This was done as quietly as possible. Someone made it public, and Nestle started a campaign in the area, to make people comfortable with it. The surrounding home ER winners started fighting. Their main initial concern was traffic. The road simply could not handle it. There is a main highway that runs through the area, but to get from the proposed plant to the highway with tractor trailers would be a nightmare. Not to mention they get a lot of snow and ice. Roads are already heavily congested during busy weeks, so a stuck tractor trailer would mean no one getting in or out for hours plus the upkeep and exhaust. That held them back for a bit. Nestle submitted proposals to help with traffic problems, and showed how increased taxes coming from them would help with upkeep. They also made special concessions to the home ER winners about how and when the trucks would be operating, sound barriers, setting access roads back from neighboring properties, etc. It all sounded logical and reasonable. People supporting kept talking about how much money would be brought in. Things D down and Nestle started to move forward. Then the bombshell dropped. 
Someone got some documents somewhere, and some numbers did not add or match up. Very 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 long story short, a lot of people had been flat out lying. Nestle was planning to bottle over three times what they were telling the public, which also meant three times the traffic, facilities, three times the workers, also the traffic from them, where they would live etc. and facilities. Additionally, they had bribed several local officials to hide this info. Those officials did not just hide it, they literally were changing documents to hide it. Official documents. Lawsuits were filed. The home Niawanas and other affected people all got together to present a united front. They got some good local lawyers who really got the ball rolling. Then some bigger lawyers found out and came to help us steadily reduced fees. Mostly pro bono, but there are experts slash court slash outside fees that of course had to be covered. It was amazing, because as far as we knew, the local lawyers were leading the charge and the big shots were at carrying a backseat and supporting from our experience. Nestlora's defense was that everything was already going forward and too late to change. Also they pointed out initially that the locals agreed. The LAO brought forth all these industry experts that showed that there would be little to no impact. The locals and the lawyers fought like rabid dogs and poked holes in everything showed the initial agreement was based on false numbers. They brought in state experts, not national PID experts, to show the real impact. The most damaging was the inevitable reduction of the water table, and proved that the water table was not as deep as they were saying, and it would put an area into drought that never sees a true drought. It would decimate the area, the people as well as the environment. The expert was well respected, and his numbers and conclusions held up under scrutiny. During this, the officials were indicted. One was convicted I think, and the other plead guilty. Donna had quote me on that one and there were others that got off scot-free, but the two that were changing documents, and lying publicly did not. Nest lost. They were forced to pack up and leave essentially. It should be said the home ER winners were probably listened to a bit more, because it is an isolated area and those home ER winners and business owners have been there for generations. They know exactly how to build an area for people without impacting the environment significantly, and protecting what needs to be protected. Edit, sorry to all the replies. To answer, this took place in the Pocono Mountains in Pennsylvania. Edit 2, OMG thanks for all the awards. I had no idea our little story would get such a huge response. I used to try and boycott Amazon. Never ordered anything from them. Did not go on sites like Goodreads or IMDB. Did not shop at stores they had shares in. Then I discovered Oars. Tried to run a custom script that would block any site posted on Oars, but that made using the internet nearly impossible. The final mail in the boycott coffin was when I needed to use it for a web development class. Now that Amazon has bought MGM, I am not sure how anyone will ever be able to participate in society without filling those also pockets. Macro transactions and games that are only there to speed up a ridiculously slow progression model. R. Kelly. Kills me I can never hear Ignition Remix ever again. Such a banger. After this week. In Activision and or Blizzard, however that. Is structured. Autism speaks. Among other things, the way they treat autism like it is some kind of horrible personality disease is unforgivable. I wish I could boycott slash avoid those stupid hula adverts with that grinning idiot in the hat he who thinks he will live more in rear I iPhone me 20 years, so whack. Yelp. They are horrible to small businesses, and require them to pay a fortune for ads to bury any negative reviews. If the business doesn't spend on ads, they bury the positive reviews. Yelp also seems to attract the worst critics. Bank of America. Ed me over for $10 back in 1993 on a mistake they made. Never getting my mother. I'm business again. I was boycotting Blockbuster for charging me late fees, because they lost the tape I returned in their evening return slot. Those guys they ain't not getting my business. Johnson & Johnson. 
Their baby powder gave my sister stage 3 ovarian cancer at 29. Chin is on her fourth recurrence, and just turned 32, and is about to enter hospice. Went from top of her career field in demand all over the country to living with our parents, and me to help care for her, and cannot even walk up the stairs without help. Them. Dennis. I got a side salad with my meal, that had a huge sticker on a chunk of lettuce that I discovered, when it was in my mouth. Spat it out, and called the waitress over to show her, and asked for the manager. The manager comes over to my table, and says what's your problem? Uh, I found this sticker in my salad and it hurt, when I bit down on it. That was in your mouth. Gross. What do you want me to do about it? I don't think I should pay for it at a minimum. She snatched the salad away from me, and I never saw her again. The waitress brought my check and lo, and behold there was a salad on it, that I had only tried to eat one sticker cover bite. I protested and she said, the manager thinks you put that sticker on it to get a free meal. You Dennis. Orange sticks. Around 10 years old, I ate the whole top layer, 14 sticks I think, and a little, while later vomited 5 times in a row. I know it was my fault, but I can't look at them anymore without thinking about that. What is an orange stick exactly? That's smart. My aunt works there, and said she is surprised that every animal in there has not died yet. Caskets, headstones, and burial plots. When I'm dead, just throw me in the trash. The Kardashians, and everything associated with them. I have been boycotting Carnival Cruise Line ever, since I found out they are dumping plastic into the Bahamas. They even admitted to it, and received a 20 million dollar fine. K-Cups. I think the Keurig is a good product, but the disposable K-Cups are so wasteful. I have a Keurig, but I use a reusable pod, that you can put ground coffee into. Edit, this is the reusable pod I use, https, slash slash www, warmit, com slash ip slash perfect pod single serve coffee filter cup reusable coffee pod compatible with Keurig K-Cup coffee maker slash 846,568,726. There are probably better options out there, but I bought this one a few years ago from Warmit, and it's held done. Harvey Norman. They have terrible customer service, and they took a whole lot of Australian government money that they didn't know it deserved, and are refusing to give it back. Peter. Tells us how to take of our pets, while abusing animals themselves. Cat Von D. Matthew. Even now that channel is supposedly not part of it anymore, I am not risking it. TikTok. Never used it, never will. I remember when it was first introduced to the world with its horrendous clickbait, cringy advertising and marketing, really skin crawlingly cringy singing, and dancing videos from questionably aged girls. People swore it'd never catch on, but those same people are the short term memory idiots fully buying into it now. But it goes deeper than that. I hate TikTok, because of what it's done to the other media sites, particularly Instagram. It's created a culture of sensationalist, narcissistic egotistical behavior, as that has become today's sell point. And as a result, Instagram for example have now tried to turn their own platform into TikTok v. 2. I use Instagram for my mates, nothing more. I don't want. I'm reels thrown in my face all day, celebs talking. About products they never actually use, people making fake videos for views, clickbait thumbnails, sponsored ads at a ratio of 1, colon, 3 posts, and even a Ein shop. TL, doctor, TikTok and today's online culture in general is cancer. Influencers. YouTube premium. The Oscars. Screw the Oscars. That Hollywood circle jerk has absolutely no business telling anyone what cinema is. 2017 Boss Baby got nominated for Best Animated Feature, but your name did not? Excuse me? WTF. 
Then 30 plus people die in an arson attack on an animation studio in Japan, and not so much as a single word during the in remembrance section. If that happened to PRO Vertical Bar they would have given them a full on 20 minute segment. Twitter. Hobby Lobby. MLMs. Pretty much anything in one of those unskippable YouTube ads. Any company that bug that interrupts any YouTube video in watching. Edit, I should've said, that YouTube made plenty of money just advertising on the website etc, before jamming it down our Ing throats every 3 minutes like a Thai TV station. I don't blame the creators for the problem. The problem is these massive companies never being happy with the billions of dollars profit they make every year. Having to push for more and more is just greed. Giving a About the royal family drugs, at least the scary ones. Reminds me of the user on reddit who tried heroin for fun once, and then proceeded to get addicted all, while doing regular armors. That stuff works better than most anti-drug ads. Chris Brown. Cannot stand to listen to any song by him, or that he features in. You've been visited by the ghost of a very important man. Pay your respects by liking and subscribing, and he'll grant you three weeks of good luck.